Ready. Coach Crabtree, first things first, welcome to the Ohio Cast podcast. I think we're at number 11. Uh, welcome and congratulations on your 300th dual meet win the other night. Uh, you guys, who are you wrestling? We were wrestling on Versailles at the Napoleon Duels. Is that when the 300th was? Yep, 300th was in. And then they presented you at the Vermilion Duel, the, the, uh, the assembly duel, right? Yep, assembly duel. They recognized it, and it was a uh, good thing. What's the official number at for you, Coach Crabtree? Three hundred and two. Three oh two. So the Vermilion Sailor, Sailors gave you three oh two, but Versailles gave you three hundred. Correct. And Wapa Canada was three oh one. Okay, so that was a big duel tournament. How did you guys fare at that duel tournament? We wrestled well. We were eight and one, and we lost to Napoleon. Who has a really good team? Actually, Napoleon, I got to see they got a really good three and a real good 113. Their 113 won the Perrysburg, right? You won the pit. Yeah, they're they're pretty good. Uh those two lightweights, you know, get them started. They also got a good 90 pounder, and I mean they're just solid all the way through. Yeah, I like that. I think that's the new uh the new craze is having a good uh good dual team. You guys had a huge win though that I want to point out and I want to congratulate you on. You knocked off Columbus to sales, right? No, we didn't wrestle to sales. That was Toledo to sales. We you wrestled. beat Toledo to sales. Okay. Yeah, so St. Francis. Beat, to sales. You beat just St. Francis. You didn't knock off Columbus. You knocked off Toledo, St. Francis to sales. That's co that's yes. confusing when they don't put the the name of the city that it's in before that. You can see how that's confusing to me. Yeah, St. Francis is. Uh, you know, they both. You know, use the same name. So yeah, it is confusing when they don't put the name, the city name in there. But the the D two team, Columbus to sales, Luke Fickle's alma mater is going to challenge Graham this year. Yeah, um, yeah. Coach Palmer has it going on over there, and um, you know, in Columbus, and uh, they got a really good team. I mean, there's a chance um, on June or January twenty second, the South, which is Columbus they vote on which sectionals they're going to. And this year in the um, – for the Northwest District, the southernmost um, sectional out of Columbus is coming to Norwalk. Okay, he told me about that. So Correct. they actually have the choice. I'm glad you brought that up. They have yeah. the choice to go with Graham for their district or away, for Graham, away from Graham for their district. I think they're going to go away from Graham. So you're actually going to see them. Yeah, that's uh, news to me. I've been wondering which way, you know, these teams are going to go. Now, according to a, a coach I talked to in Columbus, they said they start with the lowest team first and work their way up. So the sales will actually have the last pick if they're the best team, you know, according to their voting. Wow, that'd be wild. That would be wild, but you if you don't know what the Columbus teams are going to do in Division Two, right? So like no, they could I, band together and be like, ah, we want to separate these guys, or they could be like, ah, heck with the sales, let them go fight it out with Graham two weekends in a row. They could do that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Thing new because we've been fighting the Northeast teams the past few years, and um, you know they were voting, and you know it was always where would Aurora go, where will. Um, St. V's go. So, you know, it's been a, now we have to worry about the South, which is something different. So, um, you know, we kind of know which teams are tough down there. And um, the coaches I've talked to said, they're just looking at rankings and looking at tournament results and they were trying to figure it out themselves. It's wild to me because you came from like, I don't want to say a quote unquote, no man's land, but you came from an area in Eastern Ohio where they usually went southeast. You're from Claymont, right? You went to Yorksville Claymont High School. Yeah, went to Yorksville Claymont. Yeah, we always went to uh, Steubenville. Yeah, where, you know That's where we would go and um, you know wrestle out of there. So yeah, it's it's a little different. You know this. You know switching it up every few years. Uh, you know I wish we could just get four sectionals out of the Northwest and just stick with it. But when you qualified, you had to qualify out of Steubenville, right? Correct. What were you guys – you guys were state champs when you were in high school, weren't you, as a team? No, that was the year after. 92, they won it the year after I graduated. So the year after you graduated, 
Yeah. Claim out want it. Correct. With four guys. Correct. You cannot win it with four guys anymore. No. <laughs> you cannot win it with four guys anymore. Coach Tokenin did a great job. You had a couple of different families that had a, a bunch of kids that wrestled. Um, you actually have a cousin who was a state champ. McDaniel was a state champ for Claymont, right? Yep, in 92, yes. And my other cousin, Scott, was second that year, yes. You got to be kidding me. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. And you've got, like, these rough and tumble individuals. So what is the closest town to Claymont? To Yerkesville, like it's Denison and Yerkesville. Denison and Yerkesville are combined, like they touch each other because they used to have two high schools back in the day and then they combined into one. And the closest city would be New Philadelphia and Dover. Okay. But you're south. Are you of southeast? The, yeah. South of New Philadelphia on 250. Okay. But I can't get away from 250. I'm 250 and Sedusky. You can't, man, because it goes through Sedusky. It's a dead end into the <laughs> lake. A 250 guy, bro. Is two fifty dead end of the lake? Oh, uh, I don't know where two fifty. I don't know. We'd have to ask uh, the Whirlies from the Sandusky Register. They always they pick a road and drive in the summer. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So how do you end up from you know Eastern Ohio? Not even really Northeast Ohio, like dead East Ohio. Some people will claim it's Northeast Ohio. I I don't, but you do you. But how do you end up from Eastern Ohio end up in at, at Perkins and Perkins Township, Sandusky area? How do you end up there? I was uh, went to Heidelberg University and, and I coached at Tiffin Columbian for a few years when I was in college to make a little extra money. And I met uh, Steve Finn, who was the head wrestling coach here at Perkins, and he kind of recruited me. And then when I was a grad assistant at Heidelberg and I was hired full time and I was named the head wrestling coach. And then Steve called and said, Hey, we have a teacher retiring. I can get you an interview and the rest is up to you. And I came to Perkins and interviewed. And it so happened that the principal at the time, George Shekelhoff, his son wrestled for me. Billy Nickel wrestled for me at Heidelberg. So no I had way. Kind of Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow. So Scott Sherg, Scott Sherg from Perkins and um, Billy Nickel from Perkins, both wrestled for me at Heidelberg. It is the, the, the connections and the degrees of separation are amazing in the wrestling community. It's really small. It's really small, man. It is like super duper small. And if you're a scumbag or a good guy, they're going to find out one or another really quick in the wrestling community. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely. I must be one of those guys in between. <laughs> Clearly. Okay. So was that 2000 or 2001? Uh, I came here in 2000 because that was Steve's last year as the head wrestling coach. Cause he was also the principal at Briar middle school and his son, Ryan, who was a state runner up a few times was um, that was his senior year. And he was going to retire as the head wrestling coach once ryan graduated from high school gotcha so he was on the way out you come in so you've been at the helm for this is the 23rd season correct 22nd season. Uh, well 22nd because i was one year as an assistant okay um me and davy hermes who's the head coach at Milan edison were assistants for steve that year and then davy was my assistant for four or five years davy edison, John. davy yes right there yep Matt, so hey, yep. Max, so yeah. how, listen, one of the coolest things ever is when Edison wears that singlet and they wear it as their final singlet. I love it. It's one of the best things ever. I, I obviously I feel pretty strongly about it. I hang it in the background. I mean, there's a lot of really important things in the in the. I mean, look, look, this isn't in the picture, but there you go, there you go. We got we got Wyatt and me. We got my brother Chad winning the state title. And we got Bodie. Okay, so that's stuff that's like just off camera, but like there's things like that are super important to me. That's important to me. That's important to me because I don't think you'd fit into that singlet on the wall. I do not either. But you know what? <laughs> I got here's what I can tell you. I have two of them, and I could just sew them together, and I could <laughs> fit into both of them. Well, one day your son's will wear singlets. I bet. 
Boom, you're welcome. Okay. So you and Davey are, are colleagues for four or five years. Davey's a Perkins guy, though. So we need to yeah, – Davey Hermes. Davey yeah. Hermes. Um, it's wild to think about it because uh, the heavyweight. Who's the heavyweight, the big guy with the beard? Jason Hermes. Jason. Jason's yeah. the third place. He took third in the state for uh, Perkins, Perkins in the uh, mid-'90s. Correct. James McKinney, I want to say, won the year – that he was third. That sounds right. Okay. You know, this is perfect. all in my wheelhouse. So that what happened, okay, so the Hermeses left Perkins and they defected to Edison now. Is that an accurate I wouldn't, I wouldn't say defect. Um Davy, when I took the head job, Davy was still in college. Okay. And he was like getting his teaching degree and stuff. And so he coached with me and then um, he was getting married to Emily and uh, the Edison job came open and he was like, I think I want to go for the Edison job. And I'm like, well, absolutely. I'm like, you know, what can I do to help you? And he's like, cause I know you're not going anywhere. So he goes, you know, I want to be a head coach myself. And I said, well, I'll do everything to help you. And he ended up taking the Edison job. And then Jason, his son, Duke actually went to Perkins until seventh or eighth grade. Okay. And seventh grade. And then there were some, I think it was sixth grade, sixth grade. He went to Perkins and his mom was a teacher at Perkins also. also and then she took another job. And then there were some things that I'm not going to talk about, but um, Duke ended up going to Edison and Jeremy's a loyal guy. He's so loyal to Perkins and, you know, but family's first. And I understand that. And we're all friends and, you know, we help each other out with anything we need. Do you know another way how to say that? Another way that you could say that? You could say one thing led to another. <laughs> one thing led to another and he ended up at Edison. How about that? I'm from Eric's school, dude. So I try to get Yeah, yeah well, I'm going to help you out with your public speaking. This stays in the interview, by the way. This stays in the pod. <laughs> one thing led to another and he ended up at Edison. Can we agree on that statement? Absolutely. Okay, a little smoother. Okay. But they didn't defect. They didn't defect. Okay, well, I mean, I'm sorry you have a, a <laughs> issue with my verbiage coming from the hills of uh, Denison and Eurexville. My bad. I never so, lived in Denison. I'm from Eurexville. So I just saw your first state champion, Jonathan McGookie, made partner at his law firm. I'm not making that up, right? My second state champion, and yes. He was he your second? Partner. Who's your first? Yeah, Matt Fisher. Matt Fisher, the big guy. Yep, the year before. Matt Fisher won the year before, then McGookie was second, and then Solomon is your third, yeah. right? Correct. It's not bad. It's not bad. Those are some good guys. McGookie, where did McGookie go out of the gate? Where did he end up? I know he, he went, went to um he went to um Shucks. In the Mac, he went to um Eastern? No, not Eastern. That's where Fisher went. The Huskies. Um, Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois, yes. Okay. So, okay. Northern here's, Illinois. Here's the thing, because you're three state champions. Two of the three went D1. Um, I don't think they finished their D1 careers. Now you have a guy that won in Solomon. He's in – he is at a D3 now. I'm hearing other things, but is everybody – does everybody think they're D1 talent? Like, let's talk about that, because – Two of your state champs went D1, didn't finish their careers. And then you got a guy who's a D3 guy who was a state champ for you in D2 Ohio. Um, and then you were a D3 coach in Heidelberg. Do people get caught up on the D1 thing? Uh, a lot of kids do. I mean, they get caught up going, they want to be D1. They want that stigma that they're D1. Um, you know, Jonathan, he wanted to go D1. Um, and Northern Illinois offered him a – you know, pretty good package. Their coach is a good dude up there. Um, but Lucas is actually now at Tiffin University. He went oh, there. Oh, wow. Yeah, he didn't go back to BW. He left BW, you know, right before school started and sat out a semester and worked construction here in Sandusky. And then the new coach, Guerra, uh, contacted him, and he went there in uh, January. Well, so he's got a new start. He went from D3 to D2. Let's see, you know, let's see what he's got, right? I like that. I think that that's a, that's a, uh, it's a different move, but I like that move. He's a lot closer to home now, isn't he? 
Yeah, a lot closer. Tiffin's like 45 minutes away. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of excited. He's probably going to redshirt this semester. And, um, you know, he's going to train and, you know, we'll see what happens with him. So what is it like being a D3 NCAA college coach? And you go from like being a GA <laughs> to a full-time guy to being the head coach. It like falls in your lap. What was that like? And are you glad that you made the move that you did? Because most people want to be in college coaching, right? That's what everybody, th they think they want to be in college coaching. But then when you see how teachers have it and coaches have it, um, we can have a pretty good life, right? You and I are both, uh, you know, high school educators. I like it. I wouldn't trade it. Right now in my careers class, we're teaching it. I'm teaching about being in education, secondary, middle, and, you know, elementary, which I think elementary education, for me personally, in my opinion, is the most difficult thing to do. The kids are so needy, they're demanding, and you always have to stay engaged with them where like with us, kids are older and they're independent. You have to watch them less. You don't have to, you know, the hugs, wiping noses, and tying shoes. We don't have to do any of that. Correct. Uh, when I was a Division three college coach, I had a good mentor in Larry Shank, uh, who was the head coach when I was a GA there and you know when it's Heidelberg or when the uh, Perkins job came up I went and talked to him because he was then head football coach and we had a long discussion and he's like coaching's coaching doesn't matter if it's youth kids or college kids it's just an ego thing and I went from coaching college football to coaching junior high football and <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I went from coaching uh, uh -uh. in All American and Jason Miller, who's the head volleyball coach now at Heidelberg and runs the Black Swamp out of Bascom volleyball, um, to uh, you know being this uh, volunteer assistant at a high school. So you know, to me, you know, I firmly believe uh. it's just an ego thing, and um, you know, high school, you know, high school coaching, it's been good to me. It's been great. You know, college coaching, I was very young. And dumb, you know, there's some things that I, I learned a lot. I learned about budgets and learned about, you know, how to run Perkins, you know, like a college team, you know, as far as like going to wrestling camps and, you know, fundraising and, um, you know, making sure the kids have everything they need. And you're right. Elementary teaching's rough, man. I mean, I it's tough, it's man. Ferdinand is in uh, first grade now at Kenston. Uh, it's called Timmons. And that, that's tough, man. That's going to be tough for those people. And think about this. We get kids. You get a bad kid in a class. You get one or two bad kids. They leave. They leave the class. An elementary teacher is stuck with the kid, even if they have specials, all day for a whole year. And we got semester changes, which they don't have. Yep. I just got a new uh, bunch of kids last week. And, yeah, uh, I did, too. I did, too. I got sometimes it's good. Ones. Sometimes it's bad. My it's son it is. Yeah, my son's in his first year teaching in the elementary building. And um, he's, uh, yeah, he says exactly what you're saying. It's a he's box learning. of chocolates. Yep, he's learning. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, it's kind of like wrestling, man. You never know what you're going to get. If I'd have said to you 23 years ago when you went to Perkins, you're going to be able to make six figures someday being a teacher, what would you have said to me? I'd say, bring it on, brother. <laughs> But you'd have been like, there's no way I'm up. maybe out my highest years. I'll make $70,000. Right. Yeah. I mean, people, you know, the big thing is, you know, people would say, well, you're on the high school, you're gonna have the summers off. That's great. But you're not going to make any money. I'm like, yeah, yeah but I'm going to be happy. I'm not going to be on the phone from six till 10 o'clock calling recruits and have them, you know, talk around me, and, you know, just tell me you're not interested. So, you know, that's been, I don't miss recruiting one bit. Yeah, that, that, you know, what, and especially like, you know, we talk about everybody thinks they're D1. Everybody thinks they're D1. And the reality is not everybody's D1 and there's nothing wrong with not being D1, but it's almost like kids that want to disappoint their parents or their parents want the optics of we're D1. And, I, you know, I told a group of kids today, everyone, you know, my wife was a D1 volleyball player. I was a D1 wrestler. That doesn't mean our kids are going to be division one anywhere, anything doesn't mean anything right like for so for people to have that expectation i i am i am rooted in reality i am 
I am grounded. I understand things. I understand being realistic. I understand self-awareness. And I think a lot of people just really want that for their kids. And it kind of gets in the way of the experience. Or I think it can sour people on an experience when they go to a D1 or a D2. And maybe they're a D3 or an NAIA JUCO kid. It's just, I don't know, man. Know your level. I think knowing your level is important. How important do you think that is? You're a brutally honest guy. Knowing your level, what would you say about that? And how important is that to you? Uh, I am brutally honest. And it's like last year when Billy Smith, um, you know, was looking at some different colleges. He's looking at a couple of division one, a couple of division two, a couple of division three. And, you know, I'm like, Billy, you're all over the place. Go take some visits, you know, to each level and, and see what you like. I said, I really don't think that you're division one, but you know, I think division two would be perfect for you. And, um, you know, he ended up landing at Mercyhurst with coach Wheeler and, uh, loves it. And, uh, but, yeah, I mean, again, I think it's just an ego thing, and it's just people want to say they're D one. I mean, you want to go sit behind somebody at D one, and so I was trying to explain to to Billy, do you want to go D one and be somebody else's practice partner, or do you want to go to Mercyhurst and have them bring a practice partner, you know, for you to beat up? So that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a really the good way, way to look at it. I mean, that's what he's being told at D one. You come here, you're going to be so and so's drill partner, and then. Coach Wheeler's like, well, you come here, you're going to be the man, and we're going to bring somebody in for you to drill with. So we'll keep bringing guys in. I like that. Uh, you know, a big question I always had for my wife. I mean, when we were friends, when I first met her in uh, my dorm room in Kent, she told me she's from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And the first question that, when, you know, when someone's from Ann Arbor, Michigan, my wife's high school, it, uh, how far Perkins is from your football field is how far my wife's high school is from the big house. Really? Yeah, it's right. It's If you look on Google and you zoom out, you know, a couple hundred yards, you can see my wife's high school's caddy corner to the big so house. Is she a Michigan fan? I mean, her mom's a Michigan grad, all of her cousin. Her cousin was NCAA champ in hockey. He's a surgeon now. And she went Michigan. to Kent State? She went to, there you go, right? <laughs> so I said to her, you know, the first, I'm like, why are you here? Why are you here? And she's like, I didn't want to go be a practice player at Michigan. I want to be one of the best players in the Mid-American Conference. So, like, I, I really appreciate for my wife, her and her sister, they're both, like, very rooted in reality. They're very, they're grounded. They're they're realistic, right? And they're like, why would we go to a major school? Why would we go walk on at Michigan when we can go be a scholarship player at you know, my sister-in-law played at Southern Illinois. She played basketball at Southern Illinois. Uh, you know, my wife played volleyball at Kent State. And I appreciate that about them, right? Right? And it's like a lot of people maybe get caught up on their kids going to the Ivy League. My wife's like, our kids don't have to go to the Ivy League. They can go to Kent State. We went to Kent State. If it was good enough for us, it was good. it's good enough for them. I'm on the Edinburgh train. I want to sign my kids up right now for Edinburgh. They can go there like for room and board and everything for like twelve thousand like, dollars. We gotta nice send to Edinburgh. Place, I can afford to send them to Edinburgh. Let's go to Edinburgh right now. I've been to Edinburgh. I've been there for wrestling camp. Took my daughter there to swim camp. My I daughter. want my kids to go to Edinburgh desperately. But they gotta I'll be, able, years. I'll, I'll be able to afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I, got I, got daughter, I got a daughter who walked on the Bowling Green swim team last spring. So. College is expensive, bro. It is. How's she doing? Good. She's doing good. I mean, she's hanging yeah. in there. I mean, she works hard. I just got back from a spring trip a couple of weeks ago. I'm actually going to watch her swim tomorrow afternoon at Oakland University. Oh, up in the Detroit area? Yep. So I'm going to go up there and watch her swim. Nice. Uh, be the last chance I get with wrestling coming up, you know. The, oh, that's true. The trail. So – you guys, right now, I looked at the SBC, and I know that Edison has a lot of injuries. Uh, I know that there's just a lot going on with a lot of different programs, but Edison was the odds-on favorite. They lost some super high-end guys, like three or four really good guys who are state finalist-type guys who maybe we'll see at the sectional, but it doesn't sound like we're going to see them at the SBC. That leaves a huge opening for someone to win the Sandusky Bay Conference. It's Oak Harbor's last year. It's your 300th dual win year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of storylines going into the SBC. Have you ever won the SBC as a team championship, Travis? Uh, 
since we combined, no. Edison beat us in 2017 by a half a point. You won the the 18 though. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, I've won it six times. You well, won the 18. I've won, I won the 18 three times, and I've won the bay or the lake three times. So you're okay. So they 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 divide the Sandusky Bay Conference into river, bay, bay and lake and yeah. lake. Okay. So you guys have won the, the lake three times. The lake three times, which is the big schools, right? Correct. And we've won the eight team three other times. Yeah, two thousand six was the first year we won it. But yeah. you haven't won the overall combined yet. No, the we haven't 24, won the overall. 22 teams, whatever it is. You haven't won the mega league yet. Nope, have not won the mega league. You and I have been talking about it. I think you guys can do it this year. Do you think you guys can do it? I believe we can do it every year. But, you know, this year is a little different with a um, few kids being injured. We got to stay healthy. We got a few injuries ourselves that we're uh, trying to pick through. But, um, you know, we're about a month away from the conference. Uh, so, you know, that's a goal of ours is to uh, win the mega league, as you call it like that. Okay. Well, the combined league's a mega league. Yeah, I mean it's brutal. It's a mega league. It's a it is a nails league, and it was crazy because the COVID year when you guys had the the you broke it up into the three. Split, yeah. Oh, two. It was split into two. Yeah. Oh, it was split in two. Okay. O'Carver almost moneyballed Ennison. Yes. George Bergman. It was brilliant, and um, they moneyballed. They lost by half a point. The Berardi dude. Yeah. Pinned. The Huron guy for third and fourth for them to win. Correct. Yeah, I, I remember we were believe. watching it because they wrestled the day after us. We wrestled the lake like on Monday or something or Tuesday, and then they wrestled theirs the next day, so we were able to watch it live stream. And I, th that was me. Same yeah. Thing. So we were watching it and, you know, trying to figure out who was going to win, and then it came down to the heavyweights. It was crazy because that guy – I want to say it was like the Huron heavyweight. Yeah. He was like not going to get pinned. And he like almost found a way back at magnets or something. It was wild. And Edison won in a wild one in the last match going on in the gym. Did you guys win it that year? Did you win the other one? During the COVID year, I think Bellevue might have won it that year. So um, this thing's wide open. Bellevue can win. You guys can win. O'Carver can win. Anyone who's got a full lineup can pretty much win. Absolutely. I mean, if you got 14 dudes and they can come in and scrap, um, you got a chance to win. And, you know, that's what we've been stressing to our kids is that you, um, you know, we can come in and scrap and we can win the overall. First I said the lake, and then my son's like, no, we can win the whole thing. No, so, I, I think you can win the whole thing. I'm saying the mega league, you can win. Or when was COVID? Was that the 2020 year? Was that 2021? 21. 21. No, we won it in – I've won it in 2006, 13, 14. No, that was the eight-team league. And then and since it's been the late, the, the mega league, I've won it in 18, 19, and 20. Got it. Yeah, because they had it in twenty. That was the year it was at. It was at Norwalk. That was the last mega year, and then the last, so twenty did have a mega year, even though they canceled the state tournament. Twenty one was the split. Twenty uh, two. I think last Bellevue. Year. Bellevue won it. I think in twenty one. They won the COVID one. Yeah, and then you Tiffin, guys. Yeah, and then Tiffin won it last year. Okay. Way. So I asked. I asked uh, Max Ray. I was like, can you guys win? He's like, absolutely not. <laughs> He's like, hey, absolutely not. I, I don't think we could win. I was He's like, pretty honest. He's pretty well, honest. That's yeah. fair. So that, yeah. you know, got me thinking about it because I'm doing the league again this year. We're going to live stream the finals. And I just, it's dear to me. It's near and dear to me. This is going to be a conference. I don't like that O'Carver's leaving. I guess I, I don't get it. Whatever. I don't care. I don't want to get it. I'm just <laughs> angry about him leaving. So I don't like that. I, you know, it's a league that, my brother Ferd won it. O'Carver won it in 87 when Ferd was a senior. They were in the SLL the year before, so they're basically going back to what was the old SLL. I think it's the NBC or whatever. Northern Buckeye Conference, which... It's going to be a hit when they leave because they always got some dudes, and, I mean, they're hard to pin. I mean, O'Carver kid is hard to pin, especially during the tournament trail. I mean, and if they get on top of you, they're going to run bars, and recently, you know, George is 
threw in these, uh, you know, thrown in boots and legs and stuff. And, you know, I think, um, you know, that they're, they're difficult to wrestle and they all wrestle the same too. They you know, but I, will, I will tell you one thing though. Um, when Lucas Salmon won his state title. Okay. The last like three or probably 30 seconds of the match, we did the old uh, George Bergman circle drill. Okay. And we're out yelling circle drill to Lucas and uh, you know, just to stall basically and ride the wrist and, End up winning on no card remove. I love it. <laughs> Behind the arms. Yes. Behind the arms. We're yelling Under circle the drill. Arms. And all the Oak Harbor kids are like laughing and screaming. And George, you know, it's like, good thing you he, listen. <laughs> George has done a great job. I know he's not won the mega league yet. And he's on his way out here soon. Not this year, but so I, you know, like anyone that wins the league, uh, is the polo still the head coach at Bellevue? No, it's uh, Atkins, the polo's the assistant. Uh, listen, it wouldn't bother me if Bellevue won. It's going to bother me. It wouldn't bother me if Clyde won. Like, I just – I like – you got gritty, blue-collar people. I love it. Um, Why does my family like you so much? My brother, Ferd, who doesn't have a good thing to say about anyone, especially me, <laughs> he was like, I like Crabtree. Crabtree's honest. I like him. Why do my does my family like you so much? My brother Tate likes you. They all like you. Why do the Millers gravitate to Travis Crabtree? Because none of us BS each other. We're just straight up, honest. I mean, good or bad. I mean, I remember when we were at the Nationals in Virginia Beach, and uh, Ian was wrestling, and I think is I think it was, was it your dad was with him. Yeah, my dad and, actually. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and it, I was, it was down my there. hillbilly dad. Yes, I was down there coaching, and we were watching Ian. And your dad's in the chair coaching. And I'm like, this is odd. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is. You know, and so your dad, like, and he'll tell you the story. But he'll, he snatched me by the neck. He's like, Coach Crabtree. He goes, we're normally enemies. He goes, but today we're friends. Get in the chair and coach with me. And so I My coach- dad said that to you? Because he's not, he he never said. says something like that. That's, That's weird. what he said to me. He goes, we're used My to dad's enemies. friendly with everybody pretty much. Um. He's he goes, the, you're from Perkins. He goes, I need you to help me coach Ian. I have no idea what, you know. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's a, <laughs> it is an iron or welding. I don't know what yeah. I'm doing. So Ian we're not building a second. building, so I don't know. Yeah, he, he ended up taking second in the national. I think he might have been a junior. And uh, your dad shook my hand and thanked me. And ever That's since awesome. then, ever since then, he, he likes me. What part of Claymont do you think you put into the Perkins program? What part of Yorksville Claymont do you think you bring with you? Uh, toughness, uh, discipline, loyalty. Um, you know, I try to teach him a cross face cradle. Oh know? my God, dude. Some guy felonious assaulted me one year at the Medina. <laughs> I want to say it was Armstrong. This guy just kicked the ever loving tar out of me. And he kept just cross face cradling me and just murdered me. Technical fall me or something. I was a freshman. It was like terrible. And it was the match to place. It was awful. Yeah, so, so you know, bad. I try to bring toughness, you know, because that's how uh, Coach Peters and Coach Tokenen was on us. And, um, you know, I try to bring a winning tradition. I've never had a losing season at Perkins. Wow. Congratulations, years. man. You've done a great job. I've never had a losing season. I mean, so I try to, you know, emulate that, you know, the Claymont program, you know, I think. What was your best finish as a high schooler there? Uh, you know, we were ranked number one in the state my senior year and then we just kind of faltered the state tournament like talk about it but did, did you qualify um, i was fourth out of the district out of studentville and then it was just a freaking disaster after that so, so wait you did but, qualify as a, as a fourth qualified then yeah we yeah i was fourth out of the district so but it's, was it follow your man all the way to the finals yeah follow your man all that who'd you stuff. draw I don't remember. It was so long ago. Ah, but you qualified. You guys were number one. You didn't end up winning, right? And then they won it the next year. So Coach Tokenen claims that we were, um, you know, we, you know, helped kickstart the program, you know, my class. But, you know, I try to, you know, focus on, you know, the future and, you know, and the Perkins kids, you know, want them to do better than, you know, I've had others. And that's why we coach. And, you know, so it's great. 
do you feel that that takes like the more you as you coach the less the the more in the rearview mirror like i'm bringing this up and you're like yeah i'm i'm good i want to talk about that it ain't about me man but does it get further in the rearview mirror for you oh it's been in my rearview mirror for years i mean i I just brought it up yeah i mean i don't even care i mean okay are you and davy hermes hermes are you guys frenemies yeah i mean we compete against each other i mean we go at it you know pretty hard i mean abe you know he's uh the middle one who's a 13 20 pounder he he plays baseball for me. He's played baseball for me for the last, I don't know, since our kids have been seven. So Davey's Hardy's really good at baseball. He is good at baseball. You know, Davey coaches baseball with me. I mean, you know, sometimes. And, yeah, I mean, we're friends. Absolutely. So we does Harbaugh, here. does Jeff Harbaugh live by you guys, your boss, Jeff Harbaugh? Harbaugh lives in Huron. What? Yes. Shut the front door. I Listen. <laughs> this is not going to stand. Are you mess- So you guys have open enrollment at Perkins? Yes. So he can bring his kids over. Well, we've always had it kind of as the teachers could bring their kids. Yeah, bring I think, yeah, like we started that way at Riverside. Yeah. I don't think we're like that anymore. Right. But now we just have full open enrollment. So, yeah. yeah. So anybody. Just buy a Barnes Nursery in here. Listen. I, I'm not okay with this. I'm not all right with this. It's a urine tiger, huh? That's where he lives. That's where he pays his taxes. Yes. Uh, Jeff Harb. Jeff Harb from Harbor. We got to talk to him, man. That's wow. I didn't think you could lead the ship with not living in the community. Wow. I wow. just moved into the community. I just moved into my new house. I've been lived in Snusky and I just built a house and moved last week. Dude, that place is styling. I I can tell you got like a vaulted ceiling in there. That's cool. Yep, that's that's my wife, man. She that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's love awesome. it. I love it. Um Bold prediction for the SBC. Are you going? I'm going Pirates. Uh, we'll find out February 18th, man. I don't like making predictions, but if I'm a gambling man, I only gamble myself. So, Love it. yeah, I'll go with the Pirates too. Is there anything else you have to add before we jump off here? I know that we it took us 20 minutes to get the audio settings right. Do you have <laughs> anything else for me, Coach Tra- Crabtree? No, I appreciate what you do with Barbarian and Go Ohio and Defense Soap. That's what we did yesterday. We defended what we built, you know, with our in-school duel. So defend, pretty- look at me, defend what you have built. This is an excellent product. This is the oatmeal. It's a natural exfoliant. Guy Seiko, Gus Seiko, Charlie Agazino. They do the job. Defend what you've built. No question about it. I'll tell you what, you ever want to get bailed out of a grease in a camping trip, have some <laughs> of these bad boys with you. It will uh, potentially save the weekend or week for you, Coach Crabtree. Thank you for the time. Listen, let's not put it past these guys. These guys can still win, too. There's a few teams that can win it, man. So, hey, look, if they could pull a rabbit out of a hat, the, the Chargers could pull a rabbit out of a hat. I, I We could see. Coach Crabtree, thank you for the time. Thank you for coming on the Go Ohio Cast podcast. Good luck to you moving forward, and congratulations. On your 300, 300 first and 300 and second win of the year. Coach Crabtree, thank you for the time, sir. All right, no problem. Thank you, Zeb.